got Roxanne Moore in the house, Emily from Motorcrafts. Hi, my friend. I enjoy chatting with her so much. And Gail Lauder, of course. Vicky is also here. Donna, Mary, Debbie. I see a lot of familiar names. This is wonderful. I love you guys. I uh, love catching up with you guys. So Janine is here. Hi, Janine. Nice to see you. Kimberly. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, we have got a jam-packed. Hi, Kate. For Richburg. Um, thanks for helping out with some of the back end TBGE stuff. Uh, this is completely a, <laughs> it takes a village for someone to put on something like this. And so we're all like little cogs that work together in a beautiful, harmonious way to make this very successful for all of us. Um, and of course, you guys are a huge component of it. And then I think our friends on the back end are also a big component of it. So um, shout out to all of the 17 participating companies in this whole thing. Hi, Shelly Penny, my Canadian friend. OK, so um, I'll quit yammering on Deborah Perez. Hi. Um, and we got a jam packed show today. It's it's crazy. Like how many things I wrote down everything because my silly little head forgets stuff. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is the giveaway. So if you make a purchase, I'm going to Vanna White it today, and I've got like a little bulletin board full of stuff. So if you make a purchase on www.silversilkonline.com, you can, you will automatically be entered into a drawing that happens on Monday after the Great Beat Extravaganza, like is completely finished for the, uh, for this month. Um, I'm going to do the drawing for this this wonderful deliciousness, as my friend Julie Juliana Avalar would say. <laughs> um, this deliciousness, the capture chain big bundle, I guess, is, is the best way to put it into a term. But like, look at all this like rainbow goodiness that really is here. It's it's so beautiful. Um, it's a great collection. It's great if you are new to silver silk and you have no idea what to do with it or if you're too you know you're kind of on the fence about buying it but you know if you do grab something from the store it could be it could be a two dollar clasp it could be something higher end it doesn't matter you're automatically entered there's nothing to fill out nothing to do um just shop which we're all good at right <laughs> so i wanted to make sure i touch base on that um you should get an email uh, i hope i'm 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 thinking I did get confirmation that you are automatically entered into the thing as an email whenever you do buy something. Um, so that's been sort of going out as well as as confirmation on your end. Um, what else do I have? I've got ah Tuesday tutorials. So I wanted to talk about my project for Tuesday tutorials. I think really, though, the way to do this is going to have to be to turn the camera around and off this this face again so <laughs> let me turn this around ah there we go okay if you don't have any clue what tuesday tutorials is it is a show that i put on on my facebook and my youtube channel um so if you're new to silver silk please go to youtube.com and check out the silver silk and more channel um, and I stream to Facebook live directly to both YouTube and Facebook. And it's every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, or if you're over on the East Coast, it's 6.30 p.m. every Tuesday. So there I am with an apron. I don't really wear an apron to the show, but it was a cute picture of me, so I just had to wear it um, and put it on here. But uh, yeah, check that out. We do something new every every Tuesday and come up with a brilliant fun technique, or at least I do and teach it to you guys. So this time I wanted to sew on these little cup chain, like, I guess they're different size cup chains though, but you know, I took leather cord through this three millimeter meter, excuse me, three millimeter leather cord. And I wanted to stuff it with, uh, into some hollow mesh. So that's this stuff right here. This is just a type of silver silk that exists in my collection. I've got four different types, but we've been mostly focusing on hollow mesh this entire um, year as we've started it and build more projects around it. And so I put it inside leather, um, or I put leather inside of it, excuse me, and put some single strand end caps on, and I'm gonna teach you guys how to sew cup chain onto it. So you won't wanna miss it this Tuesday. This is gonna be really fun. You can see I kinda got it started and um, I'm using some needle and thread. You don't have to be a bead stringing expert to do this. 
I was trying to find something that was sort of a happy medium for my friends that do like to sew and use silver silk. So come with your supplies, imagination, and good vibes, and come groove with me with this project, you guys. Um, I have different colors on the website of leather cord if you're interested in this project or more down the road because I will be using this in future tutorials. Um, I think I've got about eight different colors and then you'll want to grab a pair of single strand end caps as well as a clasp of your choice and Emily of Motocrafts. Um, I do will have a I do have a clasp for this actually this time around. Um, we all kind of make fun of me because I never have a clasp on hand whenever I'm doing my tutorials. <laughs> so I finish up my project and I'm like, uh, I'm going to have this done after I get, you know, my project done after Tuesday tutorials video is over. But this time it's like kind of all put together. So it'll be fun. Okay, so on to the 20. Okay, so this workshop. Yeah, the 21st through the 23rd. All right. This is a big one, you guys. This is a big one. So I want to talk through, let me put that aside. I'm going to scoot this camera back too, because you got to see this deliciousness. It's like the word of today, right? Delicious. All right. This is my big push, my big thing, my big beginner to intermediate to advanced level course um, project that I've been working on for the past four months, and it's finally come to fruition. So I'm teaching a workshop in May, and you'll need this box. You can find all the information on www.silversilkonline.com. And um, if you're there, check out the blog section of the website because you'll want to click into that, and you'll want to click into the thing that says Ultimate Silver Silk Weekend Workshop. And it is all based around this little beauty box here. Let me open it up and show you what's inside. Okay, so let me explain what you're looking at here. This is a book that I wrote and put together. This is actually the editorial copy, so yours won't have this ugly gray banner on top. <laughs> this is actually the copy that I've marked up, so I don't wanna flip through it because it's got all my editor notes in it, but it'll be a lovely surprise when you do get it. And there are a total of 10 projects in here. And look how cute that just like fits into the whole, the whole package, right? And what a great way to introduce it. Um, and then here's the back side of it. So you can see it's it's going to be pretty legit when it's done. It's got even got a barcode and stuff. But um, yeah, it's got 10 projects in it that pertain to um, sort of a, a beginner level or someone that doesn't know how to use silver silk. And this is only going to be centered around capture and pearlesque chain. You'll notice that there's three bubbles at the bottom and the first one's filled in. So you're probably wondering, well, what are these other two for? Well, I also have two other lines that I'm currently in production, one of them at least. Um, the second bubble will be for hollow mesh, both hollow and hollow pearlesque. And then the third one will be for flat mesh whenever it's in production. So this is gonna really be a three-part journey to silver silking. And this, this workshop is gonna continue on and it's gonna evolve into other, um, other types of workshops later down the road. So this is the first one out of the three though, and I finally got myself to put it together. So here's a schedule for the workshop. It's gonna be on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of May 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. So it gives all of the projects, we're gonna be doing a total of five together. Each of them are back to back in one hour each. And then we get do get a little like 15 minute break for coffee in between, um, and then, there are five projects, but there are six activities. The last one is a Zoom after party because you know, my silkies know me. You all know how much I love a cocktail. And so I thought it'd be fun to get on Zoom all together at once. I'm gonna have someone, I think, appoint someone in there to um, kind of facilitate asking questions and stuff and just, uh, just hang out and have a good time. Um, so anyone who buys a kit, and I'm only doing 60, there's, and I'm already like 50% sold out. So um, these are flying up fast, and I don't know how much I'll end up promotioning it um, down the road here <laughs> because they're selling out so quickly. But um, anyone who does buy this larger this larger kit um, gets an automatic invite to the after party um, and a code to join me. 
So that's the schedule. And then here are the kits that are packaged. So let me check my time though. Okay, so I'm doing good so far. Um, the kit for this is this project here, coming up roses, it's earrings. We're gonna do some wire um, wrapping to make this bird's nest. And I made a custom made um, chain here. I can't really pull it out and show you, there we go. It's sort of this fuchsia pearlesque chain that has gold inside of it to match all the gold that's on here. Um, so this is this is all in here, you guys. So that's that's one thing. Um, what else? We got swift currents. Here we go. This is gonna make this project here. Look how gorge that is. I mean, seriously. You get a triple strand and and clasp. Excuse me, I can't talk today. I have my coffee sitting out here. Actually, I need to take a sip of it. And um, this beautiful teal color chain. And I'm gonna show you a very important trick on how to add check glass to it. This is something that I just came up with on the fly one time and I was like, you know what? This has got to be part of my book and workshop. What is this on my finger? I got like pen marks. I am sorry. I was also working out in the garden today so my nails probably look a little bit rusty or rough there. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, so that's a kit for that. You see, I have to like get notes to be able to stay on point because I will just go up in 47 different directions. Um, Mighty Rivers, this is a great piece. You get a lot of silver silk in this, not to mention a tool that I invented called the silver silk braid board. Okay, so this is a tool that I had fabricated and it teaches you how to braid silver silk very precisely into, so you have four strands that are braided together. And so I'm gonna show you how to use this little tool during my workshop and you'll get a braid that looks like this. Um, so that's included with the kit, both of those things. Let me put that away. Okay, I appreciate all of your <laughs> commenting. <laughs> You're such a sweetheart. Okay, so yeah, let me put that away. Um, Woodland Wonder. So this is on the cover and I kind of changed up the palette a little bit for this design, but I love how, and this is funny because I didn't intend this to happen, but the pieces can kind of fall into their own season. So for this, I'm kind of thinking the fall season, just because of its very autumnal colors, got this beautiful copper that's in it, and then you get these really great textural, almost kind of reminds me of tree bark in a way. Um, but I just thought that was a beautiful palette, and so I must show you guys how to do that. Um, with this particular kit. So that's included in it. A Path to Patagonia, this was a love piece for me back whenever I was doing kits with, um, with well, I guess it was one of my first few kits, actually my mystery kits. Um, Patagonia was one of the places that we visited and um, I made this project from it, but I decided to reinterpret it and make it into this eclectic style um, nature inspired bracelets. So there's lots of things in Patagonia that I think are really cool from the ice caps to the wildlife, the, you know, flora that's everywhere. So, and then the sun. Um, so there's different textures throughout this bracelet that really bring it together. And you get to weave that beautiful chain right through it. I love that fish. It's, it's like a happy little fish too. I think that's actually the gill, but I like that little, I like that little fish there. So anyways, that's what the kit looks like. And you'll notice that you'll get also a free little charm that says silkies on it because i love my silkies we're all a team we're all a club of cool kids and um i don't want anyone silky hanging out by themselves without no charm of course so i included that into your kit as well okay and a clasp so you can't make fun of me <laughs> All right, so let's party. This is your invite to the um, Zoom after party. Just a reminder of when it is, um, whenever you do uh, enroll in and you'll get this cute little ticket that comes at the end. Okay, so my time is up for that and I'm going to have to now move on to my actual project for TGBE. You see, it's like a super slam pack show, you guys. Okay, put that aside. And we're going to get to our Seaside Santorini kit. Here we go. Okay. This is a mystery kit that I just released last month called, oh, my back hurts, so I'm going to have to sit down. <laughs> it's 
no fun getting old, you guys. Seaside Santorini. Um, I have a lot of fun with myself and laughing, so I apologize if that offends anybody. Uh, so Seaside Santorini, this was inspired by the beautiful um, Santorini Island and its Grecian-inspired art, architecture, its gorgeousness. I just thought of something like really high-end. I'm literally going to open this up um, in front of you guys. And it's kind of sad I have to destroy an envelope for it. Though. Okay, hold up. There we go. Come on, it's really like packaged in there. So here's what that looks like. With my mystery kits, it's pretty packed with some really great materials. The card is the most cool part though. I, well, not the only cool part, but it's one of the cool parts. Um, you get this beautiful inspiration card that has a color palette above to show you the direction that I took the kit in. And it gives a very focused, um, I don't know, inspirational, viewpoint and so that way if you're wondering what other colors to tie in with your design if you've got more beads at home which I know all of you hoard because I do as a crafter um, this will be a great way to show that you can incorporate these colors or textures into your design you get in my kit and there's not many of these left I think I think I might have sold them all out by now who knows um, if I did I probably had like three left this is Storm Capture Chain. You get a full three-foot spool. It is a gunmetal chain that has a knit, uh, a blue knit over it, and it is super delicious. We get this. Okay, this is custom made. You cannot get this on the website. You can only get it through the mystery kit. So lucky for the people that did get it because this looks exquisite and very high end to me. Um, and it's the chain that's produced. So what we have here. I feel like Joan said something and everyone's laughing. Joan, are you here? You are here. Okay, you say it's good to laugh at your own jokes and laugh at yourself too. I didn't wear a tank top though, so forgive me. <laughs> I know you wanted me to, but I didn't. I'm going to save it for the May show or the, the May workshop. There'll be tank tops and cowboy hats, you guys. So we're going to make it a costume party. There's a blue tinsel that's been knitted over a silver ball chain. And then over that is a antique white. So you get this little shine and polish on the inside and you get this beautiful exquisite matte on the outside. So it's a very ritzy chain and can really elevate your style and um, execution and everything. I think it just looks really, really high end. And then, okay, so components, we get these two um, little frames that are about, uh, maybe about three millimeters in width. So it's just great for filling in with things and we're going to be using that in today's tutorial and then you get a really great bead mix um, with just the right beads to you know fill in your design and embellish however you want including these cute little fish that are in there which I'm going to be using today there's also a little pendant in there if you're wanting to just do something simple and plain you could throw that on with a jump ring you know onto your um, storm capture chain and call it good and uh, I included a pair of end caps as well. Here they are. Um, so that's also included in the kit. So you get all these things in this one little bundle called Seaside Santorini. Normally I would release a, a kit the same day that I'm unraveling one, but because I'm doing the um, big workshop box this time around, I'm going to actually release the next mystery kit next month. So it's all about Seaside Santorini right now. All right, let's get to today's project um because i know that's going to take up a little bit of time let me put some of this stuff away though oh by the way all of my stuff's labeled um which most of you know knitted by Nile with love literally i literally machine knit this myself there's no like big production house behind the scenes i do not have employees in my company i have loving parents that like to package things occasionally whenever i bribe them with with candy or um i don't know my general presence <laughs> um they we all love visiting each other i'm joking um and we most of the time get along and so you know how it is with parents and stuff though like i don't know anyways i'll quit babbling but um yeah no it's a family business so it's really just me behind the scenes and i'm doing this all out of love for you guys and uh continuing the good vibes there okay let's see today's project so I thought 
um, we would make this sort of aquarium vibe piece with the frame and a few select beads. You don't need a whole lot to make a wow pendant, I think. So really, if you wanted, you could either turn this into a lariat, which is what I'm gonna do today. You know I love a good lariat because they don't require a clasp. Um, for those of you who know me, know that I have a problem with clasps anyways, just you know, having them on hand. Um, that's why I do lariats. So I'm gonna do that today and show you guys this cool technique and uh, this cool little wire wrapping to make a fun little cap on to the ends of your beads. <laughs> Vicky says, hey, mommy, I will buy you dinner if, yes, I've, I've used that before and it has worked. <laughs> and she got a good dinner though. I took her to a, um, actually she came over during lunch and I took her to a nearby Thai restaurant that I love. It's hole in the wall. Their food is amazing. You know, those hole in the wall family owned places do the best though. Okay. So for this, you just need a couple of a couple of feet of 20 gauge um, craft wire. I like to use the Softlex craft wire personally. It's the most soft and easy to use. Um, you want to make sure that your craft wire is very, very soft when you use it, especially the way that I'm going to use it today. And I'm just going to use a pair of cutters to trim off. I would, I would say a foot and a half, two feet maybe is not a bad amount to have. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee real quick. Uh, there we go. Okay, and then you want to have your beads kind of picked out and ready to go. So I took my little fishy, put them there. I'm going to stand back up again and actually turn this back around. All right, and then I've got my little sparkly little glitter ball that's in the, the kit as well. I'm going to put that out there. And I've got a nice little pearl. So put that there. Hi, Em. I, don't, I saw your name pop in earlier. I didn't get to say hi, so I'm saying hi to you now, buddy. I hope you're doing well. Um, love seeing you. I know on StreamYard, it's hard for me to actually catch everybody on there, so I just wanted to, again, make sure that I do this through my phone this time so I can directly talk to you guys. Robin says, had Thai last night. Little place we found close to home. So good. I know. Thai food is one of my faves. I love, love, love. Thai food, and I like Japanese. Um, what else? Uh, low Lebanese, hello. I love Mediterranean cuisine. There's another hole in the wall place that is nearby where I live, and I like to frequently visit them as well. All righty, my lovely headphones are running out of battery as well, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to get new ones. I still haven't. What we want to do is start here at the bottom. You can, you'll can. you also notice that I've wrapped a little bit of wire there at the end, so I'll show you how to do that. But what we're going to do is start with making our loops at the bottom first. So I just take a pair of round nose pliers, and I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple of circles to start with. This is going to be the focused width of my rectangular pendant. So what I mean by that is that whenever I flip these guys around, this is what's going to be secured at the bottom there whenever I wire wrap it. And then the rest is just going to be used as filler. So what I believe I did was I just used my fingers and I just started to layer a bunch of loops together. And you can kind of make this up along with what you're doing and how you're sort of bending this. You could just you know, drop in a bead wherever it feels right. Let's see. This bead has a baby tiny hole, so I gotta really focus in on seeing where it is. And once you drop it in, then you just kind of use your fingers. And this is why you want craft wire to be soft. So you really want to um, save your fingers all that stress. So you can start to see that this is filling in quite well. And again, just continue to layer it. If you go outside of the frame, that's perfectly fine. I need to actually go back in and um, bend this so that it becomes part of the artwork. So you can take your round nose pliers and just kind of curve it in tuck it away, nobody's gonna know. If you wanna sandwich it in between some of these, 
me see if I can do that. You can absolutely do that. There you go. See, it just like hides pretty well. Currently, it kind of looks like bread now that I think about it. Anyway, we can add in our little pearl. There we go. Love that. All right, so then again, just uh, working my way around. You can kind of check back in and make sure that it's fitting into your frame pretty well. There we go. Looking good. Okay, I think the next one I want to add is, I'm going to make this happen with blue bead here. Very cool. You see how just easy that just works up? I mean, you could really use this for anything. I just love how sculptural and beautiful it looks with the beads. There's a lot of um, what I call negative space between the beads, which is all this like extra space that we're just creating that makes everything look like it's floating. Um, so it's really a great thing to utilize for art, especially. Okay, so looks like I got, I can add this little guy in. Ah, Mary McMahon says, love this idea. Surprised at how it's being done. I know it's, it's much easier and kind of came to me at the last minute whenever I was like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do for this project. And I feel like some of my best ideas hit me at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I want to, again, just double check to make sure it's fitting in the frame like I want it to. Looks like I kind of want my fish to um, work out up there. So we're going to do this. And I have it backed against another loop to make sure that it sticks up and out like I want it to. So one thing you want to keep in mind is just having a loop that kind of sticks out behind the fish or, you know, just cut to anchor it, if you will. So I just kind of looped it behind it to keep it in place. And then I can continue to make all the loops here. If you position these loops strategically, maybe you can make it look like bubbles up here. Um, I am not that fancy, so <laughs> I'm gonna forego doing that. <laughs> Ooh, Kathy came up with a good idea. She says, just, I was just thinking that maybe slightly hammered wire too. Um, you can absolutely go back in and kind of, you know, add some texture to this with just hammering. I think that'd be a really cool idea. Especially just with the tone on tone, delicious. Okay, so kind of the same concept as far as having loops up there to anchor. So I'm just gonna, kind of work this back around, make sure that I have enough of that filled up there. And that looks like I got a little carried away, so I'm gonna push some of those down. But it looks like I got plenty, so that's perfect. Squish this back down, that's, that's gonna work out pretty well. And I'm gonna make my last loop here and then just clip it and kind of tuck it in the same way that I did before. If you really want to be secure, you can take in your round nose pliers and just uh, go ahead and twist that in. So that looks perfect. Pretty good. So now I got my little wire component all finished and now I just have to anchor it inside of my frame here and uh, kind of squeeze everything in accordingly once it's positioned the way that I want it. So here I will need, where did I put it? I need 26 gauge wire. Let me grab that real quick from my stash. Do, 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 do. I know I had some sitting out here. 
and I put it somewhere. <laughs> sure, we all do that though. Here, I think I found some though. Ah, I've got 24, that'll do. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some 24 gauge wire. You could use 24 or 26, um, whatever you've got on hand. And this is just what I'm gonna use to anchor. So you don't need very much, maybe a foot will do. Okay, so now I'm going to basically just wrap these loops that I made here at the bottom to the actual frame. Just a couple times, a few times, um, to get it nice and anchored. If you wrap it too many times, you're gonna end up having a wire nest down there that you probably don't want. Because I think visually it'd be too distracting. So what I do is I do three, and then I just kind of trim it behind here. Okay, trim this off. And you can use your chain nose pliers to tuck this in. Okay, scooch that over and I'm going to do one more wrap here just to even it all out. You do want two wraps though because each of my jump rings that I have connected to the um, the little shells here, these are included, the jump rings are not included in the kit, but these little shell um, bobbles, if you will, are. And I'm going to attach each one of those between my little wraps that I'm making. One, two, and three. Alrighty. Perfecto. I think I actually would have preferred 26 gauge because it is thinner, um, but I'm not bothered by this too bad, too badly here. It, it ended up pretty good. Okay, same thing up here. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? And there's some stuff that I missed apparently. <laughs> Here and all kinds of silly things out there. Okay, almost done with this wrapping, you guys. It's looking pretty good, though. Pretty happy with this. Ta da! Beautiful. All right, so now I think we'll just have. Just enough time to squeeze this one last technique in. Get our piece all built together. We're gonna add in our wrapped bead there. Hopefully I can do that pretty quick. I'm saying I'm like a, I did pretty good with the timing today. I know I ramble on sometimes about stuff, but hey, that's what Tuesday tutorials are for, right? So hopefully you guys will join me on those dates. It's every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. 
let's see if I can do this, um, 2.30 Pacific time and or 6.30 Eastern time. I did it. I did it. I can tell time finally. <laughs> Okay, so you saw that I just slid those jump rings in between my wire wraps there, wherever I could fit it on the frame. Ah. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. That worked really well. And now I just need to make the wire wraps to this. So this is easy. You just take basically like a foot of um, I'm using vintage bronze color to kind of tie in with my um, color scheme here. You know, I like to mix metals and luckily for me, um, at least the mixed media look is in currently. And I don't really see metals as much as, these, as, much as I see colors. So color wise, this vintage bronze palette fits in with the theme here. Um, but I'm just going to start to make a little wire wrap loop here at the top. Okay, and once I've made my P-shaped loop, as I did, I'm going to go back in and break that neck, reinsert it in and straighten out my wire so that it's now nice and even. Slide in my bead. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm not going to wrap this just yet because I need to anchor this other side first. Actually, you know what? No, never mind. There we go. And you can really make the loops as big or as small as you want to. It's gonna inevitably be connected to um, to some jump rings that I actually thought I had on my board here, but I. Oh wait, they're in my bag. Okay, we're good. All right, so once I do that, I just take it down and once I start to kind of coil it, it starts to coil it in on itself and you could great get this really great bead cap happening pretty easily. Do you see that? Once it starts to pile up. So what I do is I just let it go against the curve here and then I pull back out just a little bit and then I clip off the end here and then I just pinch it back in and boom, easy peasy, decorative and fabulous. There we go. So same thing to this side. So I'm just going to grasp it with my chain nose and just start to coil and let the wire do the work for me. Okay. Boom, there we go. Gonna slide this back out. You see how it's curved right there? I'm gonna just go ahead and trim off right there. And I'm going to now take my pliers and just pinch it in. Hopefully, I take a little maneuvering there, whoops. It kind of sticks up, I like that actually. There we go. All right, so that's like a basic look for a bead cap, I guess. So I don't really have any in the kit, but um, I do want to actually do one thing, and that's to make sure that these are both equal, or not equal, that they're both um, faced up. You see how my loops are now both face up? That's what I want to make sure. And then I'm going to grab my jump ring that I have here. I've got leftover beads to do other stuff with too, with this kit, which is kind of cool. And that other chain, the other uh, storm capture chain to make something with. So then I could just attach all this stuff together, right? And I can have like a great, really cool design for the spring season ready to go. I just need the right outfit to wear this with. And I'm wearing white today, I bet I could put this on actually. I didn't mean for it to look this like that's so weird it's weird how my brain works because I did not intend for this to look exactly the same oh my goodness that is like so scary I don't know how that happened 
That's weird scary, you guys. <laughs> that is weird scary. You just never know. You never know what's going to happen on the bead table. I never know what happens on your bead table. You never know what's going to happen on mine. That's the fun part. Let me put this on. What I might do is actually I'm going to stagger it. The cobalt blue is a must have. Yes, Tammy, absolutely. Um, and then, you know, you could just like do a quick little like knot with this. Actually, I might have had to do it before. I'm going to do it with the one, I think. Kind of like a tie. Actually, that works. Let's have it loose like that. What do you think? I think that'd be fun. Can you guys see that okay? This is how I would wear it. Pretty fun. I think it's cool. <laughs> Shelly says, you are a genius, Neela, go with it. I don't think I am. I think I'm highly creative, but... You know, okay, so Sarah Ayler or my friends from Softlex, a clean white shirt, no tank, no cowboy hat, no onesie. I love my outfits, I know, but I have to I have to keep some professionalism for this today. Just a little, not very much. You could get all those things, though, if you sign up for the May workshop. Cowboy hats. Um, I'm not going to do the onesie because it's way too, way too hot for that. I will do tank tops, though. I think tank tops are fun. <laughs> I can make a bolo tie. Yes, I did get to say hi to you, Sharon Piatek, my genius friend. Um, but yeah, that's a good idea. A little bolo tie would be cute with this. So, well, that was my um, presentation. And I would say just I've got four minutes to spare. So I guess I get to talk to you guys for a bit. So how's everyone doing out there? Um, th a lot of new people, I'm sure, watch this. And some of uh, us already born silkies are here as well. So, guys, I've got a Facebook group called the Silver Silk Silkies, and it is brilliant. Just the amount of sharing we do with our jewelry pieces that use silver silk. I'm inspired. I know you guys are inspired. Um, so for those of us that are new to silver silk, come join us. We're like a big, giant family ever growing into this big, beautiful, I don't know, um, unit, if you will, of silver silk um, believers. <laughs> and we're all just super nice. Um, sometimes we wear cowboy hats and sometimes we wear onesies. And uh, all the time we're creating with either silver silk or our partnered companies here's products. Um, and it's just a great community vibe. So I really do hope you'll come in and check us out. Um, silver Silk Silky's Facebook group page. Otherwise, if you just enjoy my shows, um, which I hope you do, you can find me every Tuesday on Tuesday Tutorials or over on YouTube. Um, I've got a channel for the Silver Silk and More uh, business, and I've got a ton of videos, ton of resources on there for inspiration on what to do with Silver Silk. If you check out the playlist section of YouTube, you can find buckets of um, Capture Chain projects and of Hollow Mesh projects specifically. Another great resource that I encourage you to go and read if you have time is the Silver Silk blog. On there, I've got I've got the 10 technical tips to better silver silking, which is extremely helpful for those of you that are new to silver silk. And um, some really great tips on crimping, on some basic like technique etiquette, and finishing out your designs and doing it with simple ease. Really great resource for doing that. Um, what else? I'm on Instagram, and I've got a ton of resources and exciting videos on there as well. You can see some of the behind the scenes of how I make Silver Silk with a couple of videos I just uploaded a couple weeks ago. Um, hi, Ginger! Oh, my goodness. Um, I, Ginger, I'm surprised I hadn't caught your your comments earlier. <laughs> You're always gonna end up asking me something crazy, I know it. But it's so much fun. <laughs> I think my phone just, or my, uh, what's it called? My earpiece has died. So let me know if you guys can still hear me. Hopefully you can. I'm gonna take these things off because they're basically useless at this point. Yes, Sue Delay says 10 tips is terrific. Absolutely. 
Alrighty, you guys, I am, I guess, pretty much done. Uh, I, I ended up talking about my workshop. I ended up talking about my special giveaway. If you purchase anything in the store, you can get these nine beautiful capture chains. I don't even know where I put them. Oh, they're over here. You can get into a drawing into winning these beautiful nine capture chains. Anything in the store that you purchase between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday tomorrow. I'll do the drawing Monday and I'll post it to the Silver Silk um, business page on Facebook. So one lucky person is going to be very silked up for a while. What else? I think I, I mentioned the workshop, the Santorini kit we did. And so I guess I'll just introduce the next guest that's going to be on here in a few. You definitely need to watch Kayla from Dakota Stones and Tori from Goody Beads because they're going to make a fantastic bracelet with um, a carabiner that's been decorated. It's got some uh, rhinestone embellishments on it. I thought they were beautiful. Um, I was like, heck, I want one of those. And they're gonna, it looked like the bracelet was also knotted. So it was a really great demo idea and I hope you guys will check it out. I, I definitely will be tuning in as well behind the scenes and wearing my beautiful neck piece now. So um, with that, I leave you inspired and um, glad to join you on the Great Beat Extravaganza yet again. And uh, go get a drink of water, go get any break that you need and come back and join the TGBE group for those two very lovely ladies. They'll be starting in about 15 minutes from now. So I love all of you, love catching up with you, and I will see you very shortly. Mwah! Big hugs. You know I love the hugs.